Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Coffee Craft. I am your host, Donat Jr., and we are getting ready to wrap up Season Zero. With us today, we've got Rayest, and hopefully real soon we'll have Arcadius on as well. Um, <clears throat> yeah, as we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, we are getting ready to wrap up Season Zero and start Season One. There's Arcadius signing in now. Um, and we got a couple things before we get started on the, the wrap-up and tour and such. Um, I did make a bunch of changes to the CoffeeCraft website. So coffeecraft.us will take you to our main website. I took down <laughs> all, all the posts that made it look like the Anon Junior Show. And, and I'm going to move those over to my main website, anonjunior.com. As soon as I finish a couple of uh, revamps that need to happen with that, I, I'm yada 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 some programming stuff. If you're into that thing, let me know, and I'll cover that as a separate endeavor. Because I, I know that while there's some overlap in the programming community and the Minecraft community, uh, I don't necessarily know that everybody wants to hear that. So uh, I'll I'll show mercy and uh, go over that at some other point. What we are going to do is we're going to do a bit of a world tour. You know, all the things that we got done in Season Zero. And we're starting with the most recent project over here, our little um, village overhaul. This started life as a, a, uh, <laughs> a normal-sized village. And we decided we were going to make it bigger and better. Hello, Rest. Hello. By the way, that's me. He has my head on. No, I see that too. Okay. So, yeah, this started off as a normal sized village. It's actually the uh, the first village we ran across. It's where we um, <clears throat> borrowed a couple of people to <laughs> to start the uh, the the villager breeder trading hall over at the main community center, and. Uh, this was definitely a bit of an adventure. Uh, an adventure in scale, because one of the things that we had talked about going into Season Zero is, prior to that, we've been in the habit of building kind of small, kind of special, and we were going we to build, build a little bit... Huh? Yeah. Well... <laughs> they're, they're huts compared to what we're building now, that's for sure. Um, and... and yeah, so, so we expanded the village a little bit. Uh, not really thinking too hard about the villager mechanics. I want to say the first lesson learned is we expanded it a little too much. Too much. Yeah, well, to be fair, I think one of the things that we probably should do next time is set up a villager breeder instead of expecting them to populate the village as they meander about because I've noticed that a lot of the guys... Um, like to hang out over here in the market and over by the animal farms. No, I'm not going to read too much into that. Just ignore that conch shell. Um, so as you can tell by my inventory, <laughs> I decided to try feeding them and trading with them to get them to, to you know, populate the village. And they, they'd start making the little frustrated hearts. And apparently they don't think there's enough beds nearby. And I guess if they're focused on being over here, they wouldn't think there are. So one option would be to make sure that uh, we build more beds into the structures. Like we, we've got a over in the library that Rayest built. We've got a couple of couches that are actually made using beds. And one of the villagers actually loves sleeping in this bed for some reason. He, he's declared it his own. He, he loves the, uh, the, the library couch. No judgment, sir. <laughs> yeah. No judgment. He's sir. a college kid. <clears throat> so, <laughs> so maybe doing more stuff like this, so that way there are beds, but without it being obvious that there are beds all over the place. Um, let's uh, let, let's start let's start at the front gate and make our way around what we have built and kind of go over some of the stuff that we've got. Um, starting with the gate, th this is actually the third go-round that I had with the design for the redstone gate. Um, really nice little redstone machine. Went over the mechanics uh, under there in a previous video a couple of times, especially when I ran into issues with the other gate. 
This is the same redstone I've got in my castle that we'll get to a little bit later. Yeah, so we got our open and close and all that. Go. Oh, ah. Can I just say I really appreciate all the different textures in this and how it's yeah. subtle. It doesn't look like Candyland because some of the overly textured stuff, the reason I don't like it is because it feels like... Yeah, that's. I don't know. <laughs> um, now, it just gets much, very much. I, I like this. I really appreciate I this. <laughs> yeah, that that's been a little bit of an adventure this go round. Um, to be fair to my earlier game self, when we go to look at my castle at the top of my mountain, it won't have nearly the variation in textures. But that's because we were early game enough that I didn't have, I didn't have vines. I couldn't make the mossy stone if I wanted to, and uh, I didn't have the, a good furnace set up to get um, to get a lot of cracked stone at that time. It was always my intention to go rough it up later. Um, that is one of the things that I I saw a couple other YouTubers do that I, I'm definitely going to take moving forward. Because if you watch the live stream where I built this gate, you'll know I did that same basic idea. I built the whole thing in solid brick and then roughed it up later on. And I think, uh, I think that's a really good way to go. Um, so, when we set up this village project, the, uh, the gate and the fence was my, my task. And, uh, yeah. So there we go. And we'll kind of hit up some of the towers as we move along. And then we come to the centerpiece. With, uh, Arcadius's little fountain. Still not where I want it, but it looks a lot better than it did. I think uh, Reyes added some of that detail work to it. Yeah, you had the... Uh, I, I do like the terracotta in the bottom. Kind of gives it that pool feel. Yeah, I was looking for something that would make it look like someone tossed coins in there. But, you yeah. Well, you know, we've got the uh, the armor stand books on armor here. Armor stands. <laughs> you, you could always you could always uh, you know pull a zombie Cleo and put some iron nuggets on the bottom, like somebody tossed a couple of coins in there. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Yeah, that's not Our my cup. Arcadius, of tea. walk us through the um, bazaar. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Okay. Hmm? It's weird seeing myself over there. <laughs> No? Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, before I forget, let me, uh, don't usually do this, but let's, no, not the resource packs. Uh, where's video settings? Are you going to put shaders on? Yeah, I'm going to put some shaders on. It looks so cool with shaders. And wait, 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 uh, wait, just for everybody, because we're going to the hard mode and I need to learn how to do. <laughs> yes, that that is, uh, that is one thing that's, uh. In season one, we are switching from normal to hard mode. Really? And, uh, oh, wait, that's a little, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, somebody, <clears throat> rest, is infamous for forgetting about that whole eating and sleeping thing. In real life and in the game. And, and so we're, we're taking bets on, uh, how long it's going to take her to die of starvation. Um, Arcadius is thinking the first day. I'm thinking it will be at least within the first week, but it's even odds as to whether it's before or after the uh, the first phantom kill from lack of sleep. <laughs> all these are fair. <laughs> Just want everybody to know that is all fair. <laughs> okay, so Arcadius, okay. the bazaar. I, I really didn't have much of an idea except for this one up here. This is the newsstand. You know, you got the, the small little station right here. It's right next to the, the main walkway. So this this person here would be the one selling newspapers and books or uh, magazines. Uh, beyond that, I, I really don't know. <laughs> oh, there's some nice little builds. Uh, I think the yeah, but next... it looks like you had fun playing with different materials. Yeah. Yeah, I tried to give. I didn't want to like just recreate the same one over and over again. So you notice this one's got the the canopy in like this triangle formation. Uh, this one's got a, a little like hump, and then these over here are about the same. 
and then this one here was kind of the fun one actually i, I stole this design I, I don't remember from who but it's supposed to be like one of the the beach umbrellas <laughs> oh yeah so i just <laughs> completely stole that one but um it is nice now um, next time we do a village project like this We'll probably have to put some workstations over at these guys, like uh, like this one over here, to get them to meander over this away. But I, yeah, I, if I, I remember, remember right, we didn't put any of the workstations way. down until we got the villagers breeding up, and, well, they, they're not cooperating with that endeavor. Hey, you guys are just talking to each other. <laughs> right. who, built the, uh, who built the station over here, the granite one? Or Grinite. I did. Depending on... Uh... Oh, wait. I did. It is... With that kind of lighting, it has to be erased. What? Yeah, that's... Uh... I don't like bad guys. <laughs> Definitely too many lights for my build. Uh, yeah, well, for your build, yes. <laughs> yes Not too many no. lights. Uh, the lighting <laughs> is lighting. one of the lessons learned this season. <clears throat> Arcadius. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> uh, so the deal with this one was I kind of imagined the whole village as starting way in the back with the more, um, like, like real, really old English style buildings and imagined it like oh, if yeah. the building grew and they got access to different materials. So this being imagining more late in the game, I was trying to think like, well, what material looks the most like a fabricated material? Ah. Uh. Um, and especially because I use a lot of English inspiration for the other side. Um, I was thinking what looks more like the like 1930s ish prefab house kind of thing they were doing. And this material I felt kind of had that vibe the most. Uh -oh. Oh, buddy, buddy, buddy. Uh oh, we we might want to get uh Java some Benadryl or something. I hear the fireworks already. Oh boy! Oh poor puppy. Yeah, yeah. It's the second scare you dog to death day. I mean New Year's. Oh, oh, poor dog baby. Although Arcadius is doing a ser serviceable Java impersonation under the you know hanging out under the table. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's make our way around. <laughs> and who 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 put the farms together? Was that Arcadius or was that? Uh, that was Arcadius. But I didn't do this alone. <laughs> oh, um, okay, Arcadius. Okay, I did the chicken coop. I I did move the boxes into the ground only because I had a couple of villagers meander into the sheep pen, and I, it was interesting getting them out. Because they were hopping up on the chest and then over the fence, and then looking at me like, "What?" <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I built the chicken coop just because I figured they would have chickens, and I built it as far away as possible because I hate the clucking noise. And I imagine so would they. Oh no, I took you both here. Alright, well while you two do this and talk about that, I'm going to get the Jebba the sleepy time meds. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> so we got some nice little sheep pens, pig pens. I, I like the floor in the pig pen. Is that coarse dirt or is that just dirt that's far enough away from the grass? No, uh, it's coarse dirt. I wanted it to look muddy. So you have path blocks, and then you have uh, wet farmland and coarse dirt. Nice. <laughs> yep. Nice. Yep. So it's all nice and muddy for him. And of course, are cows. Um, <laughs> note to self: now that the village and pillage is the thing, uh, definitely keep a cow or eight around in a bucket. Especially because some people like to forget where the village is. And uh, meander into the village with the uh, the the bad omen. Oh, we've got hey, so I many can't, I can't. banners floating around too. I can't believe how often Reyes does that to us. <laughs> and uh, by the by, yeah, if you'll notice in each of these corners, we got these little towers that go up to the uh, 
They, they get a little scaffolding ladder that goes up to the top. I did end up covering it with a pressure plate because you can go through the pressure plate and that blends in with the rest of the tower. So it doesn't look like you got this giant glaring... <laughs> like, here's your wicker basket in the middle of the thing. So you can't actually come down through those as well. Uh, if you're noticing that my uh, scaffolding has a little bit of a gap in the middle, that is a texture pack off of the vanilla tweaks because it makes it easier to see where you're going. All right. Let's get back to the center and I let's do the church. And then by the time we get to the library, Reyes will be back after giving Jebba some some time to calm down meds. <laughs> Poor fella. Uh, yeah. I did this one. Um, we started the village thinking that it was um, over here was the, the main starting zone. So all of that is pretty much following the same material stuff that you could have found in this area. And then the further away from that you get, the, the more likely uh, it's something that's been moved in. For example, the library and the church uh, are things that came later. So it's got more prestige, more uh, variety in what you can build with. So with that in mind, uh, I kept the same, uh, the roofing, the dark oak. Uh, other than that, uh, the rest of it is what I would see villagers thinking is a fairly expensive uh, build. Uh, Forget the villagers. I'm looking at all that lapis and seeing it as an expensive build. <laughs> <laughs> That's a blue carpet. Get out of here. What are you talking about? That's um, not a blue carpet. I know what blue carpet looks like. Uh, it's dyed marble. Then I don't know what you want uh, from yeah, me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> that, that is freaking lapis. I, I kind of wish they'd let you do uh, <laughs> lapis slabs and stuff like that, too, but... Uh, no, yeah. it's okay. I wouldn't want to slab the floor here. It's it's too pretty. Um, I think we asked for the got a nice, got a nice the bell going pew idea. Too. Yeah, I had just a single bell, and it didn't look right. So yeah, no, yeah. Th this tower is too big for a single bell. The way the bells are now. Yeah. Yep. Also, just I couldn't attach that bell to anything that looked appropriate, so I used a golden block, yeah. and uh, I'm hoping it just makes it look like there's a gigantic bell in the middle. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it does. No, it does. It gives that vibe. Yeah. All right. To the uh, oh, and <laughs> you, you see all the open doors. That's why I usually put pressure plates on the way out. <laughs> all right. Let's take a look at the library. Ooh, the, so this looks far intro, right? different with shaders. A little more yeah. moody. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I wanted lots of books because I love books. Uh, the enchanting station was supposed to go here in the middle. But I have to remember how to make one of those. Um, and I think the hardest thing in this build for me was really playing with the materials. Because I wanted something that felt very, like, stone library-esque. Um, but I didn't want to use the stones we had already used or used for the exterior, and I was running out of them. So, again, I was going for more of a kind of polished, finished look, but that was very clean and kind of austere. And after a couple of different iterations, this is what I came up with. Uh, I really enjoy using these as lighting to kind of look more like modern-day lighting systems. Yeah, that is a nice but touch. But they didn't provide quite as much light, no. so the carpet design, besides integrating this color scheme throughout everywhere, also hides some of those. <laughs> yeah. And it does tie in nicely, and uh, I, you know, we mentioned earlier when we were talking about villagers sleeping, but I do, I do like the couch. And I know you mentioned that uh, it was a uh, Corrales design. Corrales. Yep, I saw it watching Hermitcraft, and I absolutely fell in love with it. And now that uh, Green's got that video out on different chairs and couches and things, that's uh, oh, I that's totally need to like ideas. sit there for a while and take notes. Yeah, that, yeah. I definitely need to take notes on that one because there are so many cool uh, ideas and different applications for materials. 
I, I will admit that this kind of decorating thing is a weak spot for me. Uh, I tend to be far more ruthlessly practical in my builds. Um, even when I make the exterior pretty, it, you know, it's it's like the fence gate. There, there's not a whole lot of homey touch there. There, there's it's a gate. You push the buttons. It keeps the bad things out. Well, when people remember to close it. Um, hang on. Yeah. I gotta go close the gate. That could be bad. Um, I am getting better with that kind of stuff, and I am enjoying it a little bit more than I used to. But to be honest, I am really excited about Medic joining the server because he really gets into that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, also because boxes. I like him as a person, but... <laughs> In particular, for the purpose of streaming and things, <laughs> I'm really excited about bringing that aspect to the server. <laughs> yeah, he had some really good awful. videos um, up, and then he set them all as private for some reason, showing off some of that sort of stuff. Yep. Um, and then on the outside, I this season, one of my big like learning curves was not building flat build and learning to use <laughs> alternate materials on the outside to give things depth. And it's still something I play with. I don't love the sticks here, but I do think it helped tie it in with the rest of the buildings and also give it some more visual depth. Yeah. So when you're looking at the side wall over here, you're not looking at just a plain wall of diorite. Well, I'm also not sure what other kind of pillars you could have used. I mean, there are other walls, but anything else would have looked a little wrong. Because if you did it with the diorite, it, it would have been too much diorite on the wall. If you did it with the stone brick, it wouldn't have fit right. And if you did it with the red brick or anything else, it just... Nah. So, fence posts it is. If only we had concrete slabs and stairs and fence posts, Mo Yang. <laughs> <laughs> we got okay. our little villager farm. <laughs> only one. Of, look, only one of the guys actually farms this farm. We've got two farmers. They Aww. they both recognize this as their workstation. Um. But I only see one of the two actually using it from time to time, which I find kind of amazing. He just wandered off. Um, but, uh, yeah, th th this is actually, this is not where the villager farms were, but this was built with the uh, classic villager farm design in mind. Um, so with that, let's go into the mansion. Now, if you've been watching in uh, live streams past, you'll, you'll have seen this a few times because this is where we were storing the villagers to keep them safe while we finished up the rest of the village and the lighting. <laughs> oh, it's Jabba. Oh, I got to remember to do new paintings too. Although we're yes. keeping that one. That's too cute. Yes. <laughs> That's the poor guy who's being scared by fireworks. Well, he would be if he wasn't been drilled out of his mind. Still can't believe the dosage is so high for puppies. Kills me. Yes. Yeah, I know. Okay, so where are we starting? Well, I mean, since we're here, well, let's start at the start at the entrance and okay. before we get distracted by the so, devil. Um, this whole build was actually we have to go outside for the start of it. Okay. This whole bill was designed because I wanted a building that looked like it was originally built in this style and was not barn and then got brick attached when brick became a thing. <laughs> All other decisions are based on that one feature that I wanted one of those really, really cool buildings with the like wood framing and the white like plaster sides nice everything else came from that <laughs> i saw a picture i was watching time t time stories which yeah. is an amazing I, british I do tv like about the, our TV i like show the about texture that the, i like the texture that using bone blocks brings into it as opposed to the white concrete because the white concrete yes, is a little too clean different. especially for the rustic feel that we've got going over here or at least in this yep. in this part of the village I, I i'm sorry i keep seeing the flag and thinking we got a guy that spawned in here like <laughs> that's awesome so yeah that's every other decision was based simply on i want this look on the outside and i went from there <laughs> it's probably not the best format to build a building but it's a start um 
So once I built the front part, I realized that we would have a very, very long hallway to complete it. And from there, this room happened. Uh, and I decided we needed a really cool, awesome dining table in this room. And originally, yeah, this like was the, all blocked off. I like the trap doors on a uh, fence post for tables. I do. I really enjoy that. It has the right thickness feel to it. Without being yes. sunk in the ground like, like a, the pistons look. Yep. It feels like a good solid table. And in particular, I like these trap doors on it because they look solid and... Really? I do. I'm a little more partial to the spruce myself, but... I just don't like the chocolatey texture. I'm okay with the chocolate checker in this build because of all the other dark oak. Ah. Like, it would look weird if we had a different floor. Or a different ceiling. Yeah. So then this hallway came about and I knew I wanted the cross window because, again, the architectural style that I was kind of modeling after. And that led me to the obvious conclusion that there must be an impressive fireplace. And thank goodness we got campfires. <laughs> yes, that, that is one of the really nice things uh, that came with 1.14 is the campfires there. That, that adds a lot of things that we're kind of missing. Um, I have a funny feeling that a campfire is going to be one of my, my <laughs> day one builds because I, if you don't know, you can cook on the campfires. It's a little bit slower than a furnace, but um, it doesn't continuously use fuel. So as long as you're patient, you can at least cook up enough uh, potatoes or steaks to keep you alive. Um, we also have the heads of our enemies. <laughs> Well, like any fireplace. If we're going to have the room with the impressive fireplace as we were we collecting heads trophies. as things happened. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking like the animal heads on the wall, except they're... Yeah, we're not going there. Um, so anyway, in this room, <laughs> this was where we were storing the villagers. Yep. Um, and then I realized they would need a pantry, so this hallway happened. It also allowed for some extra lighting options. Which helped a lot. And yeah, we got then a lot of the uh, we go upstairs. We got a lot of these guys oh, yeah. tucked under the rugs. Yep. Yep, but I think it also I needed some color in it, so I liked yeah. this palette as something to really offset. It was and like that throw actually rugs. all came about because of this one. <laughs> up here. Throw I rugs thought it looked really And then just some basic dormitory style rooms to hold the beds. Now when it comes to the mechanics, I gotta figure out why the villagers don't think these beds are even here. I I'd love to know, because it, it seems like none of them treat these beds as being available. Even though it's well Maybe within the, they the weren't radius. Here before them. Um, I have a question. If we pick them up and put them down, will they suddenly recognize them? Because they predate the villagers. Do you guys do the ones in this room? Uh, it's my bed in that room. <laughs> yeah, I put it down and it disappeared. Disappeared? Mm. Um, oh. Uh oh. Well, good thing it's the end of the season. <laughs> She wasn't crouching, so I pushed her in the hole. Oh. <laughs> 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 yes, uh, for the for those of you who don't know, we did turn PvP off. Um, in part because we're, we're not, as a server, we're not about that. And in part because before we started streaming, Rayest used to use a Jack Skellington theme skin. And we kept accidentally shooting her, thinking she was a skeleton. Um... Yeah. It was not fun. It was not fun for anybody involved. All right. Ooh, okay, the so then do you after do that the barn one, or the other house? No, nah, we'll do them in order. Okay. After that one came this one, and this was again actually same episode. Um, one of us this, should probably see. I found out. 
really cool weird history uh so because back in the day keeping animals outside was not so bueno um you needed a place to keep them inside and space was a premium so this is all grass because you would bring your animals in here for warmth and then live upstairs thank you arcadius yeah, we got a couple of beds and here, then, and again, I don't know why the villagers haven't uh, found these beds. It might be the same thing that... Well, no, because the villagers were in the ground when we put the beds down. I mean, they, they were secured in a secure location. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then we have some <laughs> roof access, because it's my favorite place to snipe pillagers. <laughs> it's also a good place to take off. They had a nice place to survey the village, too. And uh, we've got a rather simple back door. Let me glide on down. We got a nice little simple back door headed out. I made sure to use iron doors because I didn't want the villagers wandering out at an inopportune time and getting shot. Because uh, when nighttime falls, this area just outside the gate is um, <laughs> it is a horde of hordes, a horde of mobs. And uh, one yeah, order. It, it is very, very unsafe. To be outside the gate at night. <laughs> it is amazingly unsafe to be outside the gate at night. To the stables. And then we needed a stable. So all the horses have little stalls. And I guess now that the villagers have been released, I can take these out of their frames. And put the yep. cauldrons down. And... Go get them water, because we are humane people. Wow. Oh, hey, the bed just appeared in my inventory. Weird. Weird. I used a lot of those picture frames to hold ideas for things that I was scared to put down while the villagers hadn't been placed yet. And then, because all stables need a place to keep the stuffs. Because everybody so likes having stuffs. The stuff. Stuffs. Yep. Stuffs. It's stuffs. plural. Because there's many of it. Many of it. <laughs> Arcadius, you don't have a bucket of water and you do you? I need one more. No, I don't. Go fish. Sadness. And I see you went for the uh, extinguished campfire. Yeah, I knew we needed something for lighting, and I just wanted a different texture. It's still not my favorite texture option for the bottom of it. Like, I really wish the bottom had a little bit more depth to it, or that you could flip them upside down. <laughs> yes, because that makes sense, an upside down uh, campfire. Well, so you can see the depth of the logs on both sides. Yeah. But I felt like it looked different um, because it was getting very monotonous, like painfully monotonous in here. And then we got some hay because you have to feed your horses too. And then each of these rooms have just kind of like an upstairs area. Hey, why not? Yeah. <laughs> That was bad. And that's the other reason why we turned off PvP. So Rias can't punch him. <laughs> anyway. Um, and the other side is symmetrically the same because I love symmetry. Yes. And Ooh, whoever put the benches in here, I like it. Oh, you're welcome. I, I was trying to get the lighting squared away before I turned the villagers loose. And I went hunting for every dark spot. So, like, these lanterns, I actually dropped down one square from where you originally had them. The fact that you didn't even notice tells me that it blended in nicely. 
No, it looks um, good. I like it. But there was one little spot over here that I just could not get, and one little spot over here that I just could not get, so I just threw a bench over it and put a lantern on the bench. No, it looks cute. I like it. I like it a lot. And then those of you that have watched the uh, live stream know that I struggled hard doing this gate over here, even though the other three gates... I built using the same mechanics just fine, thank you very much, with no oh, actual it issues. It works now! Yes, I, I, uh, I, hey, I, hunted around, I hunted around and found a different way to do the redstone underneath, and uh, for whatever reason, the alternate redstone design worked. I mean, we got the, the same redstone <laughs> working the exact same way. <laughs> Will you stop that? <laughs> We got the exact same redstone working in three different gates, but for whatever reason, this time, it did not work. I never figured out why, so I just used an alternate design that I think I might use in the future, just because it is a little more compact. Um, it is going to be a little bit later game than the earlier designs, because it involves using a lot of observers and stuff, and that's not something you usually have uh, early game. Uh, and I forgot to mention that. We'll lock it shut so the buttons on the other side doesn't work. All right, let's head back over the other way. <laughs> and uh, I do love the lanterns, the street lights. Yes, that helped a lot. I enjoyed <laughs> those. Yeah, we 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 needed the lighting to be sufficient to prevent spawns, but we didn't need it to be you know overly like, hello torch spam, my old friend. Yeah. Oh, the dock. Yep. I like the texture you added. Yeah, and somebody's uh, workstation over here got abandoned. Founding villager oh. number three um, <laughs> was here for a dolphin. day and then left. He got in the way when I was picking, when I was knocking out a bit of here. I was cutting the floor with the axe and he jumped in front of me. Don't look at me like that. I'm not a tuna company. <laughs> We also we fenced are. off the outer edge uh, to keep the villagers from, you know, wandering off. We we tried to make it as mob-proof as we could, so that way once we turned them loose, we didn't have to worry about stuff jumping up and uh, nabbing them out of the deeps. <laughs> Although once we added that, I kind of wish I'd pulled up some of the uh, vegetation from the sand and found a different way to light this up. But uh, figuring out a good way to light the beach is uh, another trick for another day. We've got one of our two little mine entrances. There was uh, two holes that go into a big mine network down here. And I mean, we spent a lot of time digging this out and routing around and finding what's there, leaving ourselves signs because it's a maze of twisty passages that all look alike. Uh, <laughs> those of you old enough will get the reference. And one of the things we found is a zombie spawner. And so I, I, sticking to my squat palette, um, I do a lot of flat roofs. I used a combination of two designs. One is the basic farm by Il Mango. It's supposed to be uh, a little more, a little bit faster because one of the things that it does is uh, instead of just blocking the square on top of the spawner to prevent spawns, it has some uh, redstone that pushes mobs off the top when they spawn there and that should get you faster spawn rates. We also spent a lot of time underneath lighting up the caves, so this zombie spawner does a little bit better than the one that we got in the uh, community area, but mostly because we spent more time lighting up this area than we did there. And we've got a little bit of automated storage where we got the first two rows are nothing but zombie flesh, and the next two is all the junk that comes with it. Um, I am kind of curious where the brick came from, though. That that kind of scares me. <laughs> oh no! Did you did you mess up something back here? Nope. Uh huh. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm yeah. 
a lot of time, a lot of redstone. I left myself access, so if I could come back in here. Uh, one thing I wish I did do is I wish I pushed the fall spot forward one more block so that way the uh, the redstone wouldn't butt up against the back end of the fence like that. But uh, spacing is one of those things that we've all kind of had to learn a little bit about. And that's the other entrance back to the caves that we were just at. And we got a little turtle preserve. We got four, four or five turtles over here. We have five turtles. We have Logos, Ethos, Pathos, and then our last two were Anagnorisis and Peripatia. Pathos seems to love sitting over here in the corner for some reason. Yes, and Anagnorisis almost never moves from the spot on the beach. <laughs> I, I'm sure there's some deeper thing to be said over there, and I just don't know what. It's okay. I love them. I'm going to miss these guys. Hang on. Let me, uh... Wait. I got it. I got it. <laughs> yes, get, get, get in that habit. Because <laughs> that's going to that's gonna make a difference over here. And then the last couple of builds over in the village here. Um, we've got my little stone shop. Because this is where the one of the founding, one of the seven villagers we uh, kept from the 1.13 uh, was supposed to work. I built this little stone cutter room. It's it's small. It's cramped. Again, I, I'm not used to building decorative builds, so th it's a step up from my normal decorative build. But uh, it's still a little too tight, a little too small. Um, I, I I tend towards the ruthlessly efficient. So yes, I made a nice pretty shell around that, but at the end of the day, it's a nice pretty shell around a machine. <laughs> that That is my, my big push for season one, is to get a little bit more of the pretty for the sake of the pretty. And then Arcadius mm, built uh, Arcadius. this spot over here. Um, although I did come back in and add these two slabs because villagers love jumping on top of their redstone stations for some reason and I'm happy I did because I saw one of the whichever villager picked up the grindstone try to walk into the lava for some reason oh boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah well hmm. sorry Katie what were you thinking when you designed this one because I like it I like all the little like airway looking things it looks like a place you would want to work with all this hot stuff in here well that was the point is I wanted something that would generate airflow so I used a, a V roof or an offset V roof to try and amplify the amount of air that would come in and then I, I left holes throughout all the walls for airways because well you've got a blast furnace um, basically everyone that works with metal their their stations are here so I was trying to, to be kind of generous with the amount of airflow that would go through there that was the idea behind it Nice. I like it. It's cute. And so that's our village. That That's our village overhaul. That was the most recent project. Um, kind of parallel. If we fly over this way a little bit, was a project that got started but not, not finished. And that is my little temple reclamation project. I wanted to take one of the desert temples and kind of reclaim it and make a build out of it. Um... Those are the people that interrupted me while I was working. <laughs> oh, Lord. Uh, but I got a nice dock for some access over here. Eventually, I was going to bring the rail from uh, off of my base over here and maybe either drop it in front of the water, although I don't relish the idea of building redstone near water, or, or drop it over here oh, somewhere. Wait. I like this door. You got to let it close first. Did you break my door? Okay, good. Uh, now, this is one of the doors that Mumbo Jumbo put together in his compilation of uh, door builds, and I had to put it in there. Um, most of it went pretty easy, except for when you forget that one block that powers like half the door, and you spend your trouble trying to find out where where in God's green earth that one block goes. And then the other part, the other half was spent trying to figure out how to wire it up and get the buttons where I wanted them. 
I ended up putting a little glass ceiling over the hole here. Not because I wanted a glass ceiling on the hole, but because I kept backing up and backing into the hole as I was trying to work on the door project. Um, so I'll probably take all this stuff back to community storage um, when we wrap up the uh, stream. But th this was a start of a reclamation and kind of trying to get a feel. I really wanted to keep it as close to vanilla as I can, although I swapped out the uh, the regular sandstone for the smooth sandstone. Uh, I felt like it gave it a little bit more of a, like it was covered by sand vibe. Um, and I kept with the orange glass because it spawned in with the orange terracotta. And just trying to match that, that feel to it along with the red sand. That was the other thing that I kept doing is falling off of, uh, <laughs> falling off. I like the accidental A for your door. Yeah, yeah, because when I was building the door to hide the redstone, I ended up having to put, uh, to pull the wall forward a little bit. So I lost a little bit of depth on the wall. I was going to put some columns, maybe, uh, some columns up here and, and then put a little awning across the top just to return some of the depth that was there previously. And uh, it just so happened that it kind of put an A in there, which is kind of nice since, you know, it was going to be a non-junior's temple. Shall we to the community center? We should. Away we right. go. Pickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. Went for a ride in a flying shoe. Hold on, Stan, I hope we do. Cry, tickle me, pickle me, tickle me too. <laughs> Oh yeah, this is going to take a little bit to load Shell in with shaders turned on. <laughs> Alright, I'm sorry people. Give me a minute. Loading, please wait. Shall we meet at the uh, coffee cup? <laughs> Definitely. Alright. Failed redstone. <laughs> what are you talking about? Oh, that, that doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, you see a little bit of the sparkle over the top. It's not your fault that the yeah. rockets don't fly that high. Uh, it is my fault. I put in level one rockets. I should have put them as two oh. or three. <laughs> That's not a redstone fail, then. So we get a nice little, uh, nice little coffee cup build. We we decided that we are gonna get a the coffee craft logo in as a centerpiece of each each season. Uh, for season one, we want to do a 3D version instead of the 2D version that we did this go around. It's going to so, be fun. Uh, that's going to be a fun one to figure out. But if you, the logo picture that you see on coffeecraft.us and in some of the other places, that this is legit the materials that we use. We got a we got a logo world that we all sat in creative and went, well, let's try this. No, we need a little more texture in the coffee. Uh, we need a little more a little more lighting and shading. And so these are these are the actual materials. And uh, we just took a replica, uh, made a direct replica, and that was fun, except for the falling off part. Yeah, there was a lot of falling off. Um. Do we want to do the lighthouse, or do we want to get to the trading hall? No, let's do the lighthouse and then work our way that way. Okay. I mean, other Arcadius. than the colors being wrong, Arcadius built a very nice lighthouse. Tell, tell us about White Show Lighthouse. <laughs> no. We, we are so anyone who didn't time. catch the stream, uh, Arcadius originally built this in a different color palette, and the only lighthouse with this pattern in that color palette is White Shoal, which <laughs> is in a state that shall not be mentioned because Arcadius is from Ohio. Um, <laughs> that's all we're going to say about that. Um... <laughs> So it was changed to black and white, which is from North Carolina. And Arcadius this looks a lot different with the lighthouse. And then I added the little building off to the side with the head of a drown that kept interrupting. <laughs> and we put some stairs inside. 
And then Anon did a really, really cool beacon lady thing at the top with the redstone stuff that makes it actually turn on and go around like a lighthouse would. Yeah, that was an interesting... Uh... <laughs> yeah, we'll just say that was interesting. But there's a daylight sensor under the carpet up here that triggers the a uh, little redstone circuit that does a rotating light around the outside when it gets dark. Uh, probably before we get done with the community center, it will be nighttime again, and we should at least let it uh, last long enough to take a look at the lighthouse at night. Cool. Let's not, not crash. Don't crash. Well, and that brings us to this Our thing. Iron Farm Trading Hall. This went through a couple of redesigns. The The original build was uh, based off of a Cortezarino combo uh, villager breeder trading hall iron farm. And uh, the iron farm was up where that glass window was. And the trading hall looked a little different. And it functioned as both a villager breeder and trading hall. Um, and then 1.14 came and the villager breeder iron farm mechanics changed. And so we had to kind of change with it and this was <laughs> we waited a long time before fixing this just because 1.14 had a very um interesting history of <laughs> uh its treatment of villagers but uh we got most of our original villagers back in here we gave them funny names um I like the trading hall design uh I took a couple of different pieces from a couple of different designs and basically made it fit within the existing footprint. And got us a nice little um, iron collection system that was a little more robust than the one before. All the poppies go into the um, the composter there, so that way we end up... Well, we would end... Yeah, so we've accumulated a little bit of bone meal out of this. That This is uh, because of the... My, the uh, oh, it's night time. Sorry. ADD moment. And they're not dark. Did something break? Oh no! Oh, is it not nighttime enough? Oh, there we go. Oh, the. Carpet over the light sensor and probably changed. Doggone it. So there we go. We get a nice little rotating light on the lighthouse. Um, wow, I didn't realize I lit up my hillside like that. Crikey, that's a lot of lighting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, anyway, back to the trading hall. So, uh, actually, well, I'm, well, I can't fly with that. So let's go back up here. And the basic idea for the iron farm is based off of uh, Doc M's little design with two little cells and a small spawning platform and a zombie that keeps the villagers perpetually scared in generating uh, iron golems. Golems, not golems. Golem is what follows your party looking for a ring. Golem is the... Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. I, I keep hearing all the videos talking about iron golems, and I want to go, Golem. Golem. <laughs> my precious. When they really mean golems. All right. So we got our nice little villagers in here. It was kind of interesting to put them in. Next time around, I'm not going to use wool to push them in. I'm going to use glass, because apparently uh, the way the server lag update do happens, it as the... Uh, <laughs> unfortunate side effect of occasionally suffocating them and uh, some of them weren't making it all the way around I did not mean to go up that yet so we got a couple of clerics uh, Sir Eric of Jen is a nod to um, a friend of ours who used to play D&D &D with us and her her favorite most memorable character was a paladin Sir Eric of Jen Alright, and we got some armorsmiths and other guys, 
Uh, next go round, I'm not going to put the workstations in front of them because apparently that blocks the XP from getting to you. So either uh, these blocks in between them are going to be walls or um, going to do something different so that way you can actually get the XP that you're earning from trading with them. Uh, and we get a nice full circuit all the way around here with the guys that were originally in the hall. Since we had some extra room up top, we actually made a second floor. And, oh, come on, which way? There we go. That we haven't had a chance to fill yet, with the exception of this guy. He's a custom villager that I added in a little bit later that will trade uh, player heads for an emerald and the uh, gems for an emerald because we added the, um, the gems data pack so late in the season. All the places that you would normally find them from minecarts and treasure chests and things that generated, uh, they would have all generated. So we never quite got around to filling up the second floor with all our librarians. That was on, uh, that was on the agenda. And uh, oh, we got our iron golem kill chamber over here. And our lava is not centered. Yes, our lava is not centered. <laughs> I went for the ruthlessly efficient. I, I just needed the one bucket of lava. And uh, some people would like the symmetry of at least, you know, one bucket of lava on each side. Or one bucket in the middle. Yeah. Okay. Take anyway, your pick. moving along. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I almost forgot that down... Do we even have a... We don't even have a door to get down to them. Oh, no, we do. Okay, we still kept the door. Uh, you guys probably saw that trap door sitting in the ground most of the season. Because uh, while we were trying to figure out how to manage the updates, we had a bunch of our... <laughs> we had all our villagers just chilling down here in the basement. This used to be one of the villager breeding centers. Um, so the... I. The villagers that were in the old style iron farm would occasionally pop out a new villager and they'd sit down here. Um, we had to install an off switch to turn off the villager breeder function, aka a couple of lava pit traps, um, because, <laughs> because too many villagers was lagging out our early server. Uh, the hardware just wasn't equipped to handle it. Since we moved to a hosted service with uh, cubed host, that that's helped a lot of things i mean if you're looking at my live stream it's a little laggy now but that's because i got the shaders turned on and it does look nice with the shaders yeah a lot of these look really cool the shaders uh we got my our post llamas. office where arcadius built the uh the music on the door buttons yeah i learned a valuable lesson here yeah yeah, the, all the music is over here because <laughs> I needed to wire it. Um, uh, so all your music blocks are in this corner over here. So all you hear is in your like right ear. And it's even for me with my surround sound headphones, it's even distant for me. So I don't know if you guys even hear it that well. But I got to remember that where the note blocks are is where the sound is. So I need to centralize the sound and just wire it differently from now on. And uh, so Arcadius built the music, Reyes built the shell, I got the redstone so that way it lights up when uh, you have mail. We will definitely have another uh, post office in uh, season one. Uh, yes. We weren't sure if we were going to add new people during season two or after, that's why we get the extra boxing. And I got to remember not to use iron pressure plates on the doors but the wooden ones because they have a longer pulse and you'd stop running into closed doors <clears throat> this was also my first time making or playing with signs oh you mean with the the banners uh, banners mm -hmm. yeah yep before this build that had never been a thing and then tucked behind there uh, which is why we're going to try to institute a little bit more of a grid system into our city planning. <laughs> We've got a bamboo farm. I threw together a bamboo farm really quick. I'd always intended to build something that was a little bit bigger and more efficient. But uh, honestly, we, we haven't been pulling as much bamboo as I thought we would have. 
So this I farm think has just been really excited about scaffolding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this farm has actually been good enough for us. And it's the same basic idea as what I used for the uh, sugarcane farms and other stuff. Yeah, when it grows up to the observer, it pushes the piston and yada yada. Um, unlike uh, earlier farms, I actually installed off switches. So if this ever got to the point where we really needed this to not run, I could turn it off and so the piston will stop it from growing and there's another switch on the other side. So... Uh, one of the things that I'm going to make sure that I do in Season 1 is install an on-off switch for every farm I build. Because uh, all through the 1.13 and, uh, and even early 1.14, my uh, mob farm over there kind of lags out my base every now and again. You know the water's flushing when it suddenly starts lag spiking. Because um, Minecraft still struggles with water updates. The other thing that I really hate about that building behind there is honestly, of all of my builds this season, I feel like that one is aesthetically probably the most diverse and eh, sec no, second to the um, concrete one, the new age building I did. But like the most me spreading out and trying different textures and different things outside of my norm. <laughs> and it's hidden and behind it's the post hidden. office. <laughs> Yes, and exactly, and it's in mine the most office, which is like very stereotypical me, iron bars and bricks and all the heavy, like heavy feeling materials. Speaking of the storage unit. <laughs> oh, that's a lot of nether brick. A lot mm -hmm. of nether brick went into that. This also went through a lot of different concepts and ideas. And this also is because I was watching time stories <laughs> while this season was going on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hmm. So <laughs> they were doing an episode about like, I think it was, um, going through like pubs of different eras and stuff like that and this was the design for one of the pubs and they talked about some of the structural stuff in it and that was about the same time that we were needing a storage unit and this was born now this is a manual storage unit which is why arcadius has been leaving shulker boxes full of oh i almost forgot we we gotta we gotta play the note blocks without me talking over them. Yeah, <laughs> you did it. a really good job on this, hon. Like, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah, that I uh, yeah I like that even better than the Mario. <laughs> well, I did the Mario just to play with you. That was a I did that on a live yeah. stream trying to joke with you guys, thinking that if you heard the Mario death theme, you'd freak out and try to run away like I was blowing you up or something. Uh, this one I, I nah, did just, I just for... ran over it a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> this I one went, oh, I new did. Thing. <laughs> uh, this this one I did just because I like Zelda. Um, it's one yeah. of my favorite games, and uh, it, it's the sound of when you find a secret. So it was like, yeah, what what sound would I put to the place where we keep all the good stuff? <laughs> Uh, yeah, Reyest is in charge. Uh, was in charge of the design of the community center this go round. As you can see, she has very expensive taste in flooring. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, that's one way to say it. And she giggles about but it's it. It's pretty. Uh, and the idea with that that she wanted was a a bin for everything, <laughs> individually labeled out. And oh, by the by. I have the most productive arrow farm ever, um, as evidenced by arrow. Oh, no, some of them got moved into shulker boxes because we had more than just those three double boxes. Uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> and I used some in that raid. Yeah. That was an accident. Yeah, a couple <laughs> yeah. of raids got triggered over here too because somebody forgot the the villager trading hall technically technically counted as a village. For purposes of mechanics and, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, one, one of those is my fault. <laughs> <laughs> that That is also why uh, out the back 
Oh, oh, that's not the back. I got disoriented. Even though we put signs, you know, to the swamp. Don't look for Hawkeye. Uh, even though Arcadius built that nice little cow station away from the village, so that way you could, re you know, remove, fly the long way around, remove status effects before entering in the village. Uh, that was very nice. Very nice. It, it came in handy more than a few times. <laughs> Because I normally keep a so, bucket of milk on me, but uh, sometimes you need more than one. I do not. Um, yep, <laughs> and that's the thing. Um, so, the storage unit. A couple of things that I love about it, a couple of things that I ended up not enjoying about it. Um, one of the things that I enjoy is my super expensive floor. Um, it's pretty and efficient. Um, uh -huh. I originally thought that we'd put all the armor and stuff on the bottom because in my imaginary world, this is the stuff we would use the most, but not really thinking about the fact that once you make stuff, because we have mending, you don't, it's not like you need to get new armor all the time. So in retrospect, I would have should, and for next season, I want to put more of the things that we have on the My Precious floor down on the first floor. Or make yeah. it bigger so that we don't have four floors. Because I almost never need, it except for rockets, uh, anything both. on this floor. Rockets and arrows are, are the two. But I, since I've been producing most of the arrows, I tend not to need to go to the community storage for that. Yeah. Uh, and I should mention but, that the way the way we're running the server, the way we're in it for Season 0, the way we're going to run it again for Season 1, is anything in community storage is just that for the community. So and it, if you put something in here, it's fair game for all. You can't be that one Yahoo that just takes. You got to actually contribute a little bit to it as well. So, you know, put stuff in, take stuff out, but it is all for uh, the use of the community. Uh, that way it helps kind of smooth out. So if we got somebody's got an overabundance of one thing, but they need something else. Stone. <laughs> Stone. <laughs> cough, cough. Uh, between, between the all of us, we should be able to have just about everything squared away. Um, so, my precious was floor number two. My precious is the next floor, yes, sir. And so we've got. And I like the bubble boxes. elevators. Yeah, the bu the bubble elevators were a nice, nice thing. Get our um, I did learn the hard way though that these little guys can get flushed away by water. <laughs> Those were not fun life lessons. Oh. Are you talking about the lights? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also realized because surprised anybody who's not watched any of our videos before. Um, to me, all of the things that are in the this section here are those ugly things that a non-junior plays with. <laughs> <laughs> And they're useless for decorating, and they're useless for, for like these weird boxes here in the uh, bottom next to the wrench bottom box. I just left one box for that stuff because previously I didn't see a purpose in keeping a significant amount of these items. Now that we've gone through the season, I realized that those actually are useful in making and doing things, which I didn't know before. <laughs> So those, instead of putting all of the redstone stuff in one box, are probably going to each need their own dedicated storage. Um, I should add, this wrench is my favorite data pack edition. Uh, my wrench. It, over on the Vanilla, See, Vanilla Tweaks wrench. website, they have a redstone. Uh, there are two different data packs. It's a redstone rota rotation wrench and terracotta rotation wrench. So you can put your redstone down and your glazed terracotta and instead of trying to figure out the weird oblique angle, you gotta, you know, go just this way look, and look, 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 look. look over to the corner. You can rotate it once you put it down. And it is beautiful. Um, we'll, we'll get to why Rayest loves that even more when we get to her actual build. But, um, yeah, so we got two more floors of the same basic idea. They're all labeled. So, you know, all the train stuff is up on the train floor. Um, all the organics is up on the organics floor. Uh, I think uh, next season we probably ought to put the food down on the first floor um, instead of up on the fourth oh, floor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. It's really fair. Yeah. <laughs> food, arrows, shields. Uh, 
Armor, not so much. Rockets. You notice everything that's on this floor. Pretty things. Pretty things yeah. is on this floor. <laughs> Food. Who needs that? Nobody uses that. <laughs> yeah, excuse me while I eat the steak. Uh, and is that... Oh, wait. Uh, no, because we get the next building nope, over, which was more. one of my projects. You can tell because it's squat, flat, and dwarven looking. Um... <laughs> <laughs> and it you're, you're is a moderate smelter of doom. Um, Arcadius and I were originally going to build one of those ridiculously large, like 128 furnace array things into that mountainside over there and then put a furnace face on it. But in the meantime, we needed something that was bigger than any of our private smelting systems. So based off of um, one of Waddle's designs, we got a nice little three furnace array type deal. So this side is nothing but smokers. And, and which is great for cooking up uh, kelp in particular because kelp can then be bundled up and used for fuel. We got a set of standard furnaces that got more use than anything else. And there's a row of blast furnaces over here. And honestly, I think the next time around, I'm not even going to bother with the blast furnaces. I'll do one row of smokers and then two rows of regular furnaces. And because uh, Also, I really like the floor. Oh, the carpet? Yeah. Yeah, just the pattern's pretty. Eh, useless trivia. Um, I was going to prank this place as well and put in the... Uh, when you go underground in Mario, the original, that dun 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 dun, -dun sound. Yeah. I was going to put that in here, but the people on my live stream were, were telling me that was a bad idea with how much redstone would probably interact with the... Uh, <laughs> Hoppers, and then I was like, yeah, you're right, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> you have no idea how much before I appreciate we go that. Um, in there. Uh, yeah, before we go to those two, I do want to take one quick bit around the corner here. The actual build is something that I put together real quick just to symbolize it, but uh, one of the data packs we added off of Vanilla Tweaks is the uh, statues where you can take armor stands and reduce all sorts of fun stuff what you can pose them you can move them you can do um, you can add arms and uh, change visibility and all sorts of all sorts of stuff so I made a little shrine that would let you uh, get a book if you didn't have one in your inventory already and uh, and I just wanted to make sure that there was an easy place to go to get a new book if you forgot it um, what do you you stop <sighs> You're so weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. We're going to look at Reyes's first attempt at redstone. And there's yes. we found out we found out that there's a reason why Reyes does not build redstone on stream, <laughs> uh, or changes her channel to build. not fr not family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That so this was also my first attempt at a modern style build, which I was very happy with the end results. It's not perfect. I mean, please, dear goodness, don't compare this to every other streamer out there, because this is literally my first attempt. Um but for good, me, though. this was a big stretch. So I was very, very happy with stretching myself and trying something different. Um other BBC shows that I watch or British TV shows, Are You Seeing a Theme, um, was one where they were touring the world and touring all different types of houses and different, like, the, the best, like, biggest house builds in the world. And this snake shape was one that was on there. And I was like, I want to try to build that. And then I tried Redstone. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> Again, compared to other people, this is not impressive, but for me, this is the most redstone I have ever done. And I cursed a lot. It is a very nice, very functional concrete maker, <laughs> though. And since somebody was using a lot of concrete, they were highly motivated to build it. <laughs> yes. So the idea is that you and fill the up the, uh, the chest up here with your concrete powder, you get a stack in your offhand, and you're picking your main hand, and all you got to do is sit here, hold down both mouse buttons, and you'll place the powder and break it with your pick, place it, break it with your pick, and this is going to keep feeding you more powder until you finally run out. Um, the one thing we couldn't figure out how to do is get a collection system in place that didn't mess with the floor, and Reyes did not want to mess with the floor, 
So, uh... The floor is pretty, and part of the design. It, you, you just got a little bit of a mess to clean up after yourself. You live. <laughs> yep. And then we have a little upstairs place with a bed for the sleeping that I don't do. <laughs> and up here, since this, I like having roof access, because again, that's, I use my bow for everything. Um... I made a little bench, a swing bench, so that you can sit and look at the fishies. And that aquarium is sitting on top of the central hub of a rail project. That was the subject of, uh, that, that was a, we spent a lot of time on that one. Because there was at least, what, two months? We spent a ton of time on that. Yeah, at, at least two months on this one. And it, it runs from this hub up to Reyest's Castle in the Sky, um, which will be the next place we go. It also goes out to my castle and to Arcadius's place, and each one is a little redstone hub. Um, a lot of time was spent over at the, uh, <laughs> the Guardian Farm to get the requisite prismarine. There was much grumbling and uh, fussing about the quartz involved as well. <coughs> That was before... Because uh, that was before villagers <laughs> traded you. Yeah, before you could trade with villagers for it. Because um, 1.14 hadn't hit when we started this project. So keep that in mind when you consider that a lot of that quartz had to be uh, gathered the hard way. Hey, don't you have a stream in your archive where me and you did a race for an hour? Yeah, yeah. We spent an hour just uh, trying to figure out who could get the most quartz for this project. But it does look beautiful. But doesn't it look so pretty? This is gorgeous. I like this guy. Oh, yeah. Uh, he was the victim of uh, an inopportune command by some admin who does not look like me at all, uh, <laughs> who also went back and restored him from backup. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> and that's where I asked working with the armor stand poses and whatnot. Um, I think he's holding your book. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. That's a ridiculous price to come see me. Seven sea pickles, really? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Blame the trader. And I like the little waiting area. <laughs> we, we get a nice little sleeping place for, you know, when you need to duck in somewhere safe and sleep. Uh, Arcadius put together the map. Uh, that, that's his little place off in the corner that we'll get to in a little bit. This is our main rail station, so you are here. There's all our community center that we've uh, gone through. Rest's Castle in the Sky that we're going to hit up next. Then you get to my little area. And the rail station in the back. We've got our ice farm over in the corner. Actually, uh, hold on. Hmm? Let me see that. What? I don't have it. Do it. No. Wait. Yes. <laughs> Are you about to go update the map? Yeah. Okay. While he's doing that, before we travel, we need to walk outside to look at my base because there is a little brief story time about negative decisions and learning curves. <laughs> okay. And it, it has to be done from the ground. <laughs> so over here. So this... Well, actually, to start, this whole thing was once a hill, and then some kind people dug oh, and dynamited yeah. it out um, for me. Um, if you see uh, uh, earlier in my live stream archive on the YouTube channel, uh, which you should totally subscribe to, by the way, if you haven't already, um, I, we actually did a, a tour of Worlds Past. Unfortunately, uh, XSplit decided to uh, reset to the default audio system, so we don't have everybody's mic. So we may do that again later and revisit Worlds Past. But uh, if you look in that video, you'll actually see what this terrain looked like at the beginning of the season. Um, this was not a big flat plane. It became a big flat plane, but it did not originally start as a big flat plane. And so this was a small mound on the rolling hills, and, and it's now a, a temple. And I ran what I thought was so far from spawn. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that is another lesson that we all learned. We thought we had spaced ourselves out so we wouldn't be bumping into each other. And, you know, I mean, nobody could see each other from anybody else's front porch, you know, like like my castle right there in the distance and, and over here from here. And yeah, so we're, we're going to do a little bit better on the spacing thing. Okay. okay. Anyway, um, so this started as a in here. There was a hole in the ground, and it was my base. And uh, this river, I went, this river was here from spawn. <laughs> just to be clear. Yes. Yep. It wasn't the shape. There was no frozen penguin in there. I know. I love my frozen penguin. It's like me. Yeah, because Rayest is always cold. Like. You want to know what we hear every time we get started when we're playing, even if we're not uh, streaming yet? Arcadius, could you get my hoodie and Where's a blanket? Where's my blanket? <laughs> and the other blanket. And a heating <laughs> pad. <laughs> also, so everyone knows, they're not wrong. <laughs> so I, I built. I wrote out the story on these signs. Yeah. Drop the penguin off. <laughs> and I gave him a little campfire. It doesn't look like he's thought out. Any. No, he hasn't thought out yet. No. Uh, poor guy. <laughs> anyway, so this originally I built a little hole in the ground, and we didn't have scaffolding yet. We didn't have anything like that. So I built this in the exact perpendicular orientation. So it ran with the river. And I built two levels of the castle and got everything the way I liked it and got these pyramids squared away and started building stairs into the castle and decided that I hated them and realized that I could do the exact same dimensions for the castle, but if I built it in the opposite orientation, then it would be perfect and I could do these cool little water pillars that look almost like a spaceship, like beaming somebody up. And uh, I wanted to do that. So I tore it all down <laughs> and rebuilt it. At this point, I didn't know about the shift key. <laughs> and I didn't know that you could hold the shift button and not fall off of something. Oh. I died. Where is it? Statistics. So many times. Like, so many times. Um, let's see. Where is it? Damage dealt, time play, distance flown. Right. While she's looking Droppers, that up, search. we did end up pushing the uh, desert back a little bit. Because that was, believe it or not, at the front edge of that temple was where the desert originally came up to. And uh, Reyes decided that it was crowding her style a little bit, so we kind of pushed it back. Um, we also got uh, so distance fallen. 18.48 mm -hmm. kilometers. <laughs> um, <laughs> because of many falls. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Where does it get into how many times I died? Oh. And that tree with the fire on top of it, that is uh, the mine that Reyest started over by her base. Um, I, I ended up lighting the fire on top of it because I got tired of going, where's your mine? Oh, it's over by the tree. Which tree? That tree. <laughs> so I lit a fire on top of it, literally. Um, we do have fire tick turned off so we could do some of the neat stuff with fires. And I, I've gone into enough. I won't pick an Arcadius anymore about... Uh, other events. Um, if you missed it in previous stream, huh? Oh, number of deaths, 62. <laughs> 62? 62, I, I and a lot of them more. happened on this build. <laughs> oh, then the second round, I learned about the shift button. Uh, and, and that helps. Items enchanted, dropped, furnace, blast furnace, beacon, chest armor. Damage taken. Oh, yeah, I've taken a little bit of damage. Yikes. How much? Um, 11,573.5 damage taken. Oh, okay. Mine is 5,773. Uh, I also... But also, I don't fight anything, ever. Or go into the Nene place, or go to or the, the Guardian fish farm. farm. 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah so I, I don't go to any of those places. Where is damage taken right. at? It's in the general statistics. On the very bottom. Near the bottom. There okay. we go. I was looking so, for number of deaths. 47. <laughs> so for my build for future, uh, things that I love, I like the different color palettes. I really love actually these two little towers at the bottom. I learned so much about lighting this season, which was awesome with the carpets and all that stuff. I really enjoy it. Um, bubble columns are my friends. <laughs> things that I don't love... I'm I'm not building anything in the sky anymore. That that was that was that was much. Um, that was just pain in the tuchus. Um, uh, but it did come out kind of cool. And oh, who didn't sleep? It's not me. Well, I was trying to, but it said there's monsters nearby. Oh, because there are phantoms nearby. Uh, where are you sleeping? Where have I slept? In the bed I brought with me. Oh, okay. Um, so there's that, and next door is my coarse fruit farm. Because I need a coarse fruit. Damage taken, 34,833. Yeah, yeah, you go to the places <laughs> where Yikes. that can happen. I do not. <laughs> Damage yeah, Arcadius dull. and I did a couple of, uh, couple of end runs uh, on live stream, as well as more than a few before that, too. Because uh, I only started okay. live streaming back in March, even though we started the se started the season um, back when 1.13 released. So oh. since we're here, uh, let's go here to the is. other column. Number of deaths. Up into the base. Oh, 152. <laughs> See, mine's not that bad. Uh, so this is the theme for everything. I have puppies. There's a little puppy. <laughs> And okay. color -coded Am shulkers? I the only one who wishes you could kind of dye the dog so you get a different color fur and not just the color? No, I want a black lab. I want a black yeah, lab too. Yeah, I'd like a black lab. Um, so see all this terracotta? <laughs> this is why this wrench is my favorite tool. Every floor has this pattern, and when you go up into the towers, the pattern alternates. Don't mind the dirt stairs. Uh, this is where we learned about biting off bigger projects than you realized. <laughs> um, I count, I count myself like among them. Planning? Before this, I never understood all the streamers who said they built stuff in an off server before. I was like, yeah, you just do it as you feel. But when you're building at this volume and at this size, it's like, oh, that's why, because there's no way you can just kind of like feel some of this. Some of this you really do need to math out and plan out and look at it and see it. So that was definitely a lesson learned. <laughs> and I've got cute little trinkets. Like Arcadius left me the key to my heart, which is super sweet. And uh, L-U-M-U -U is a cute inside joke. It's what he and I text each other because it stands for love you miss you. And then I got the glass ceiling, which just looks cool. Oh, I didn't realize you had this uh, storage set up. Yep, this was going to be my other storage, but I ended up using the main storage station so much, I just figured I would just use that. <laughs> and then you can go up the bubble elevator, but you got to push yourself on this one. And they just keep going up and up and up and more and more and more. And we'll go down. And this was this was definitely fun. This was a wonderful learning experience. Uh, this was also my first time ever building really in play where I really started building with textures. And I had a lot of fun learning how to do that. With some of these column concrete columns on the outside. And my first time yeah. ever playing with curves, which is what I did at the end here. Are you talking about the little spikes out the side? Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, they were originally going to be like huge, big, encompassing spikes, but that's how I learned that um, curves are harder in Minecraft than Scar makes them look. <laughs> yeah. And even he complains about them. <laughs> so um, that was a lesson oh, wow. learned. But yeah, all this terracotta turning. Okay. By the by, here's the view yeah. with shaders of my castle from way out here. And I will turn around and do the same for rest space from uh, my area. It's cool, isn't it? 
It honestly looks like the back half of your castle should fall off. <laughs> oh yeah, I know, because it's got that one chunk that isn't <laughs> rendered all completely. Because I'm just far enough away. <laughs> uh, and under here is where the rail station ends up. Um, I, I do like that the end plan was to encase it because <laughs> our initial decision was to build the rail station in the same color palette at every place and I kind of I think maybe next time we'll uh, change the palette but keep the base design so in other words there'll be lamps there'll yeah. be slabs there'll be stairs in all the places but it'll use the the actual color of its uh, locale although I did kind of enjoy and I thought about changing it out for the dark but making it sporadic so it's almost like the mere touching of my base turned it to dark prismarine ah <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> yeah I like that uh, unfortunately, this part never get, quite got finished. I, I didn't get a chance to do my part of the build, which was to build the uh, on-off station. Uh, we do have the to rail. To be that fair, runs. I was also supposed to build the room for it, and it was going to well, be an extra tower you. off to the side. No, nah, I'm totally calling it. Um, okay. <laughs> and I never built the tower off to the side, so I also didn't build the home for it to go in. Just throwing that out there. All right, let's. Uh, but that is let's actually my base. Take the rail this time. Well, we were just next to my base, and we need to look at the fishies again. I love the fishies. That's like one of my yeah, favorite things this season. Yeah, the aquarium is nice, and now that they've added more fish and the seagrass and all that other good stuff, it really does add to uh, the life. And we really, really, really have to remember. To not build in a swamp next time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. Also fix the map while we were gone. Oh. Alright. So, to Anon Jr., to Rayast, to Arcadius, and the button is in the direction you need to go. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we, we were going to get that rail finished as soon as we get some villagers out of the way but uh we'll start top down and kind of work i love that waterfall that was a fun project matter of fact i'm going to let the rail continue on while i stop here for a second um there was no lake here this was the first project i streamed was building this lake and this waterfall on stream i was going to have a nice cave in the side of the mountain and then finish building the mountain off the side uh, you know, build it out a little bit more to hide the mob spawner and make it look like the castle was on a more substantial mountain. But uh, terraforming takes time. <laughs> and I, I'd like to pretend like uh, I, uh, you know, oh man, it's because I work a 40 hour a week job and all that. And so it doesn't give me a lot of time to do this sort of stuff. But Impulse manages builds bigger than this. And, uh, Works a regular job. So, I gotta find a better excuse. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, there's a couple of naturally occurring rivers that, and little streams that I'd kind of linked up to form this lake. So, there was originally a little bit of river there. And I just kind of textured out the lake there and built it up over here and tried to give it a nice rough. Um, I might have overdone it on the textures just a smidge, but I was watching a lot of scar videos at the time. And so I, I kind of hope I manage to scar like feel. Yeah, I like it. But all in all, it was a very fun build. All right, let's uh, let's get to my rail station over here. Which I figured if I was going to have prismarine in my build, I might as well go all out. Um, I struggle with rooftops. Mostly, I was concerned about making sure nothing spawned on it because I'd rather not get jumped leaving. Uh, leaving my base <laughs> and this is a rather dangerous part of town that way will actually take you directly into the castle this will go out to the gated entrance and I started working on a little bit more terraforming out here using some andersite and the new slabs and stairs and stuff to kind of rough it up a little bit more and give it a less blocky look and a little more texturized um, I too dislike snow and I wanted to try to set it up so that way the snow wouldn't fall. Oh well. <laughs> 
same gate design as what we had before. These were the first two gates that I built using it. That took a little bit extra work. And I never got to it because I didn't get the uh, tree farm built. But the idea was to build a giant, you know, tree of life or something in the middle that went up and had a couple of farms in the in the trunk. But uh, that never happened. Under here is the mob spawner that went through a couple of design changes throughout the course of the season. And this gate over here takes you to the long road down to my front door. And... Uh, Long winding road. I had a little bit more to the front here, and that takes you down to the front door. But we'll get to that in a minute. Let's take the uh, water elevator down to the next, the next stop. Close the gate. I saw somebody. I forget who it was. Use the stairs as an up and down, and I really enjoyed it. So, uh, except somebody, somebody played with my. Seriously, dude. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you can't tell who the resident prankster is. Yeah. Now remember to hold back, otherwise you're gonna miss the floor. <laughs> On this floor, I got a little bit of a uh, nether wart farm. I was originally gonna build a couple couple layers and get uh, some pistons to release the water. But uh, honestly, this has been more than enough for our needs at the moment. I will probably build a bigger bigger farm next go round in part for the per just to build a bigger farm and in part to uh, to automate it a little bit more. I dug this hole over here because on this side is the main tube for the monster spawner. The idea was that I was going to funnel all the farms into that main tube and then filter into the storage system from there. That's also why I moved my little cactus farm over there. Uh, I honestly don't know why I have the cactus farm as big as it is, because I don't use that much cactus. But there it is. And there's my uh, off switch. <laughs> A couple of slabs. These guys. These ever-loving pains in my butt. My little villager farms. So these guys produce carrots, you know, when they feel like it. Uh, they used to be a lot more efficient, and then the villager change happened, and so the farm design doesn't quite work as well as it did before. Uh, part of it is because the way this, this farm worked before is uh, the squares in the back corner there were dark enough that only a villager could plant there and not the player. Or, sorry, were light enough that a villager could plant there, but dark enough that an update would cause the thing to pop out. So they'd plant there, they'd step over the pressure plate, which would cause an update, which would cause the thing to fall into the hopper. And so they'd keep planting there until they ran out, and then they'd farm the other stuff. But um, that doesn't work that way anymore. And so we got carrots, and we got potatoes, and we got wheat. And I put a little uh, composter of my own over here, because uh, these guys produce tons of wheat seeds. And during one of the updates, uh, the villager breeding went haywire. They were only supposed to breed if there was a bed available. I originally had a couple of beds in here because for a while they had to have the beds to work. That got changed as well, thankfully, uh, because I found out the hard way that they weren't limiting themselves to the number of beds available when I came in here and this thing was packed full of villagers. Um, a lot of these guys went over to the farm to get added into our to the farm <laughs> they didn't buy the farm they went to the villager trading hall and we were going to send some more of these guys over when the time happened these are all the spares not counting the three currently in the carrot farm yeah we, we had a few extras <laughs> just a few and my little combo egg farm plenty. chicken farm uh, this was learning a little bit more about redstone and trying to get it set up so that way this would fill up with eggs and then once this chest was full of eggs, it would start shunting uh, eggs over to this side where they'd become a cooked chicken farm. And we got a few cooked chicken. Um, the nice thing is, is that instead of using a clock like my previous uh, egg cooker, it triggers the lava when it ejects an egg. So it kind of keeps things a little more lag friendly. And this is the natural cave that was already here. My idea with this build was originally to do um, 
farms and such a lot that followed the natural contours of the pre-existing caves or at least looked like they did and that that wasn't worth you know what i ain't doing that again because <laughs> trying to stick stuff in here got really awkward very early on as i kept bumping into other builds and stuff um a as we go down to the next floor and we'll take the elevator down my portal um, I don't like zombie pigmen wandering around my base. I know they're neutral. I know they won't attack stuff, but I don't like them. So uh, I set up this little gig right here where the trap doors would keep them from walking through. They'd wander this way and they'd get attracted by this guy over here named Bait <laughs> and fall in the pit. And so instead of wandering over my base, they'd be down here in the pit trap. Um, Are there any over there? No, because nope. I have, I usually only see them when I AFK, and this was my original uh, my original Nether Wart farm before I built the bigger one up there. I just couldn't think of what else to do with the space, so I left it there. Melon and Pumpkin Farm, based off a design that Mumbo Jumbo published when he did a survey of different farms, my little armory, so it's all my weapons and armor and tools. This is a little nano farm that worked on mechanics that were only available in 1.13. 1.14 broke the farm. And I never got around to fixing it. Because uh, I got the villagers and they produced enough for now. <laughs> and then the big mob dropper all comes down here into these two chests. As you can see, I haven't cleaned up for my last AFK session. Uh, so this is after a 24-hour session on normal mode, and it does okay. I mean, I could use a little more gunpowder, but... <laughs> yeah, but we also play on normal. Yeah, uh, we played past tense on normal. We're going to play on hard next go-round. I know, but Arcadius, what is the rule? Take down all your lights. Uh-huh. <laughs> this is my little <laughs> mini smelter array. Um, I've got a carpet duplicator in the background feeding the furnaces. Um, I don't know if I... I have very, very mixed opinions on some of the duplication machines. On the one hand, it's game mechanics. You, you do the thing and the thing happens and, and it happens. On the other hand, it feels a little too close to cheating. So I might not go in for the duplication stuff the next go around and find some other ways to do this. But um, this double chest feeds into those two guys with little hoppers that I could put uh, shulker boxes on top of. Yeah, we got a little carpet duplicator under there, a little rail duplicator over here. Again, I have very, very mixed feelings about these machines. Um, Maybe cheating isn't the world the word maybe it's more like those gamers who make a character like <laughs> that like completely character optimized to the detriment oh, of any kind of yeah. story yeah like it, it feels like min maxing the game like yeah because it's a mechanic that's there and that's great for people who that is their choice and they like that, but we are also all, when we play D&D, &D, when we do just about anything, we love the story and stuff that feels like it tells a tale. And the sad saga of Minecraft is grindy by nature. Yeah. Oh, did you break my painting? Dude. Seriously. You can't fix it, can you? You broke my hidden door. You have to take door. the pressure. There you go. <laughs> All right. Th this is this this was the cabin I built at the beginning of the season, and this is pretty much the storage system I was using at the beginning of the season. Um, I kept kind of compactly packing things in and doubling and tripling stuff up. Like you know, there's my precious stuff. Um, you know, and it worked. I I'm probably going to build a more expansive storage system in season one. In no small part because I would also like to uh, to to automate the storage because I hate manually putting stuff away. Um, although one of the nice things is the sugarcane farm automatically feeds into the sugarcane box. That was one of the things that I did early on, and then I realized that, that was unsustainable because uh, 
trying to route the other places into the boxes was not working with as tightly packed as things were because the sugarcane box is up under that brick up there. And if I'm burning stuff in the furnace, occasionally the carpets will glitch up into the sugarcane farm and I'll end up with carpets in my sugarcane box. That, that's why there's a white carpet in there. <laughs> so I've got a place to catch them. Um, and then up, uh, yeah, you saw Arcadia's playing with my little hidden door. Hmm? Yeah, so you throw <laughs> a item onto the pressure plate in the bottom left corner and it opens it up. I put a barrel in there once they became a thing so I could pass through. So if I got a lot of stuff that I need to toss into my uh, secret chest full of heads. And this has actually been my AFK spot too. I need to find a better way to secure the AFK spot from troublemakers. <clears throat> oh. I didn't do anything. Aw. Uh -huh. What about it? And then upstairs, I've got the bed that was originally down on the first floor. And I just had a bunch of boxes. I hadn't figured out what I was going to do with that. I've got my little enchanting table over there. Uh, you got to be careful because part of the uh, collection system for the sugarcane farm is under here. The actual sugarcane is behind the bookshelves there, which made it interesting when putting these potion makers in here. These are this is a relatively recent build, so you got your ingredients in each of the droppers, and then you push the button, if, and you get three of whatever potions set up. So this column is set up for instant health. You know, keep the water bottles topped off and all that good fun stuff. And then I got my little finishing station over here if I want to make it uh, like a splash potion or something like that. Or a one-off on anything else. I only had room for four, but I, I, don't, I don't do a lot with potion making. Water breathing, slow falling, instant health, and fire resistance. And really, those are the two that I use the most. Hence why they're closest to the stairs. My little porch. Why is there a random cart? Arcadius. Okay. You blamed for everything. Yep. <laughs> and the llama farm. The llama barn? Yeah. Yeah, the llama <laughs> barn. I, I kind of collected a few. <laughs> and two skeleton horses. And that barn's changed designs a little bit, too. Again, it's me trying to learn how to, how to build pretty stuff for the sake of building pretty stuff. And, uh... This one worked out a little bit better in some respects by roughing up the texture a little bit with some of the slabs and stairs and kind of giving it a little more uh, texture. Roofs are still my weak spot. But we'll get there in my little berry area. <laughs> hey, season one starts tomorrow. New builds. Yep. <laughs> New builds. <laughs> we get to do this again. <laughs> Also, can we just appreciate how pretty things are with shaders? Oh, yeah, yeah, hang on, hang on. Let me, uh... Oh. Yes, Medic is in the chat going woot, because he is also part of Season 1, starting tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> hang on, let me, uh... Do this here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That is rest space out in the distance. I was meant to hide that farm in the top corner, too. I was going to get a bunch of wool and make it look like it was hiding in a cloud. Next season. Because <laughs> I, I didn't like stuff like that. And the like fish farm with out. shaders. The fishies look so cool with the shaders. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, shall we to Arcadius' place? Yes, we shall. I guess I'll practice eating, too. Yeah. Oh, you took down the ice farm. Okay. Yeah, it's been down for a month and a half. <laughs> oh. I just never, I forgot to update the maps. Oh. I didn't realize that you'd pulled it down. Originally, I had a little lake over here that I was using as my ice farm. Because um, I never needed a lot, so I just harvested every time I ran by and until I filled up a shulker box or so. Actually. On the way to my base, you'll see the abandoned tree. I don't know. Why are you walking? Uh, no, I said, why am I walking? When I can just do this. Walk like an Egyptian. No. <laughs> oh, 
There's somebody's abandoned cart. What, you need a cart? Oh, 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 no, 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 no. What? Hey. Oi. Oi. I didn't. Oi. Oi. Yeah, you just look like they appeared in front of me for a second. Uh, are we missing a glass pane from the corner over here? I guess we got a little bit of cleanup to do before we call it done done. Yep. Yep. We Reyes had a fun time building this part of the track as well. <laughs> yeah, fun. We're gonna go with that. Many, many, many deaths. I love the planes. I yes. absolutely love the planes. If I could have found a way, I was trying to make it toward the uh, zero shooting down the biplane. Eh, hello. Oh in, in case you're wondering why this entrance is entrapped, uh, it's because this area is poorly lit. And so this this was the New York subway of our rail station. If you ended up in here, you got jacked by a skeleton. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the zombie your XP. walked off with his shoes and you know because they they'd spawn up here and fall in and so they'd be safe from the daylight and they'd just kind of hang out down here in the corner so you'd come in on the rail la di da di da and <laughs> give me your money give me your XP okay now we follow the red bit crude. Follow the red brick I like this. I love that you put these things in here to look like the holes that the gate falls into. Like, I know it's little, but like, I like those touches. Yeah. Oh, okay. And the waterlogged stairs and everything. Well, I needed it to look like it had been partly taken over by the water since it was built in the middle of the beach, so... But, the manicured lawn, it's always nice. Yeah, the manicured lawn is nice. This is where I will rib Arcadius again about the lighting thing. Eh, well, that's... You, you'll see... I get jumped uh, by a creeper a couple of time. times over here. And your little bookatorium. Yeah, the little shrine. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Uh, if yeah. you notice the the creeper head here, um, no, that that's not one of the original artworks. Uh, that is a, a monument. monument to creepers. Yeah, because one fell right on my head right here and blew this entire huh. wall out. That funny. That happened to me too. Yeah, so I, I rebuilt it like that. <laughs> I do like the wall. Oh, yeah. uh, I got the design idea from being forced to watch certain TV shows. <laughs> yeah. Although this it's was a really not good your series. starter base. Your starter base was in the water, wasn't it? No, this is it. The starter base was no, more No, your just... first base was over there. Wasn't this it over here under the lily pads? You built this first. Yep. We should go there. Your, your little uh. Fly. Fish up. Oh Yay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is literally all that's here. <laughs> the portal that's this down here. This is your hut. <laughs> and you had the little treasure chest outside. Yep. And Arcadius is the explorer of the bunch. Uh, I am very much a homebody. I will admit that. And Arcadius is the one who went finding all the uh, the hearts of the sea to surround with nautilus shells and get your um, conduits. This does look yeah, kind of the shaders. I honestly didn't think that diamond block would make it the whole season. <laughs> it's part of the build. It's not mine to touch. Yeah. Um, it's actually hard to tell it's a diamond block with the shaders on. Because the lighting's all weird. I do like the chest. 
All right. Shall we go inside there, or do we want to take a quick side trip to your little project before we go downstairs? Let's do a side trip first, I think. That way we can end at the nether gate that he has. Yeah. We. And there no. is the sword that Arcadius built. Yep. I got tired of trying to figure out where the entrance was. So I stabbed a giant <laughs> oh, good. sword in the ground. Because I, I thought it was just me that was getting lost all the time. I do no. like that. I think I want, if I were to make this again, I think I would switch the stone outside with the stone inside. The smooth stone. Oh, and use the, uh, so it looks the, smooth, like the, edge. the smooth stone on the outside and the regular on the inside. Yeah, so it looks like it's more of a polished uh, blade. Yeah. But either way. We. Yeah, this is a long one. <laughs> yeah, this was a fun project too because we worked on this a couple of times. Yeah, you came in and helped me dig it out some at the beginning, and then you came back and helped me with the floor. Um, that floor, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's gonna look great with shaders. Um, the lighting it is low amazing. in here, and I, I'm, I'm glancing over at my stream, and I realize it's a little darker than I thought. Um, yeah, the tunnel is dark. I, it should light up once you're in here. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, it's still kind of still kind of dark. Oh, oh where it did looks he come from? Cool. What, who? The Ender the guy? skeleton. Oh, Skelly. There's a skeleton. Yeah. There? Yeah. How? Beacon. Oh, he probably spawned on the beacon. Beacon provides light. Doesn't it? Yeah, but probably not enough light, light, not light for that bottom edge. row. Didn't you notice that all the hermits always uh, put carpets or slabs on their uh, pyramid? No, it's the, the very block. bottom row. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's eight here and it's six here. Yeah, okay, that's how you do it. Four on the blocks I'm standing on. Oh my. Okay. Uh, Good to know. That's a life lesson. But with yeah. shaders, this looks <laughs> amazing. I love how the floor looks almost like water. Yeah. Yeah. Which is super cool. And did you show everyone the um, 2D art? Hang on. Arcadius is boss with the 2D art. Yes. I wish I could have found a good way to light up that bottle because you can't even see the color differential with the uh, cork and everything. I used two different browns. Ugh. I just couldn't find a way to put a light in there. I have to thank Mark, or, uh, uh, who was I talking to? I don't know. Uh, someone helped me with the, uh, Triforce over there. Yeah, we got the Triforce over on that wall. They, uh, they helped me figure out hey, how to put some listen. light into it. <laughs> yep, that's novelty. <laughs> Yeah, the bottle does kind of missed out from that far away. Let, let's try to... Oh, without angering the enemy. Oh, no, without angering the enemy. No, no. I didn't want... I didn't mean to look at you. You blend in the dark. Go away. Yeah. Yeah, the bottle does look nice. Uh, the lighting That's does look better cool. without the... Yeah. And I, can, I like what you did with the end rods. Now, for those wondering, we do have a texture pack that takes the end cap off the end rods. Um, so you don't have to worry about up and down and which side's which and trying to match the ends. And that, that does make it look even better with the, uh, the metal bars and the end rod in the middle. <laughs> oh, this a is spawner. a lot of purple stone. Yes. Yeah, that's a lot of purple. <laughs> this was supposed to be a, a hidden underground uh, floating in city, but I just I never got around to finishing it. This is one of those things where you bit off more than you could chew. <laughs> oh, and uh, in here, oh, there we go. We've got Farmer Bob. He was a zombie villager who became a villager. And, and was the source of a lot of emeralds for the server. Um, I made Arcadius a deal. I like he needed emeralds, and I said, "Look, I'll give you." <laughs> I gave him a shulker full of pumpkins, a shulker full of melons, and I just wanted half the emeralds out of it because <laughs> I had the pumpkin melon farm going. Um, 
I had intended to build a bigger farm in the community center, but we, we realized that poor city planning made that hard to fit in there. So uh, that, that's why one of our goals for the next go round is to do a little bit more of a grid city planning. And uh, <laughs> this little happy fella gave me lots and lots of golden carrots to eat. Oh, yeah. He, he supplied a lot of us with golden carrots. Going through all my boxes. <laughs> I was going to try to find more carpet to finish off uh, topping this off. Because it's there and it was bothering me. There we go. All right. <laughs> oh, boy. But anyway, I, mean, I can show yeah. you the top side of it, but I mean, there's not much to really see. <laughs> yeah. Arcadius and I did a lot of digging in here. I tried helping once, and I found pillagers in the wall and said, nay, nay. <laughs> that was the top that side. That was the top side. Doesn't matter. This is why I don't help. <laughs> there were pillagers in your wall. Oh, goodness. <laughs> yeah. I think I flew by this uh, project once or twice. Because there was an attempt to dig down to the roof and then do another design. Yeah, I only have like another 20 blocks to go, but when you consider how wide this area uh, is... Yeah, that's a lot of digging. <laughs> that's a lot to do. That, that is a lot of digging, good sir. Yeah, let me just look at the size of this hole. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. All right, let's get back to your base so we can get to the nearest nether portal. I also really like your little uh, periodic towers that you did. I did Those two. One's over there. It was uh over there? Yeah, over there. Um, it was an attempt to make it look like this fort actually had some sort of control of the area. Let's see, port or something. I don't know, but anyway. <laughs> My Arcadia little furnace array right here. Furnace array. Here's the storage room. Nothing else to see. Nothing else to see. We're not going to. Nope, you mean like the totally no, ethical no. turtle farm? Yes. No. It's Do not you that. have more unethical turtles? No. There is no turtles. No proof of turtles. There's no evidence. You have nothing. No, actually, you did cover it up with slabs. Because there was a uh, turtle shell farm in here. Somebody went kind of crazy on the turtle shells. And somebody might have liberated them. Oh, this room looks cute. With the orange. Oh, I forgot about this room. Yeah, this is my potion oh, room. Oh, hello. This is your own base. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, yeah, Sarah Bad was splash. a zombie. She was in there. Yeah, you hit this button and it automatically makes the potion. And then if you want to add splash to the potion, you hit that button. Then all the potions so, pop into the So you can add here. a splash of splash. That's right. That's right. And then what was down these stairs? Uh, that's just where the turtle <clears throat> harvesting happened. Nothing to see. I used mossy cobblestone up here just because I thought it would basically like turtle blood. <laughs> oh, I wonder if this is why we were having a lag issues again. I'm not using a clock. There cannot be lag issues from this. You didn't use a clock before either. <clears throat> See? <laughs> Nothing. You don't have any damagey potions? Yeah, they're in the box above you. Or they may have already been turned into arrows because I gave out that shulker full of uh, crazy arrows not too long ago. What are you doing to all my chickens? Clearing up the lag. Oh, I give that to Sarah so I can get more carrots. <laughs> well, as of the end of the stream, there will be no more base to put the carrots in because there will be no more season zero. Oh no. <laughs> there will always so be a backup of season machine. zero completed. 
Yeah. Okay, so now we need to go to this guy. Mm -hmm. If there's anything I've learned, this base is too small. <laughs> yeah. Well, this portal's comfy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, wait, we don't go that way. We don't go that way. Don't look there. Go the other way. Is that where your, uh, yeah, that's where your <laughs> idiot lives. <laughs> This idiot was supposed to go out to the guardian farm to be the uh, bait for a uh, drowned farm. He, he never made it there. He said it's a long way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and look, the other side of my base. There. That takes you out. Uh, mm -hmm. Before we get to those portals and the, the fence, let's head this way real quick. Um, our nether portal, I'm going to use it air quotes on that went through a few different design iterations too um, but the main idea was to get it enclosed and this leads up to the old path to the guardian farm before we installed the rail that we're gonna ride and this took us to the nearest fortress where <laughs> many hours were spent clearing and for those guys not those guys but the other ones there's more up here too this is like a pack of eight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, of course, there's eight. You know, now that we're now that we're getting ready to chill things out and call it done, uh, you can still see the arrows where I put directions to find our way back through the fortress. And we got a little zombie yeah. pigman farm over here. That uh, turtle egg acts as bait. They all wander into a too large pit. Um, lessons learned. And come on, down the ladder. And so you go down here into this pit. Um, one of the things that Arcadius and I learned is that, that you need to get a little system to narrow them down into a smaller chamber so you can actually reach them with your sword. Because the worst thing about the way this pit is, you can have a blaze in that back corner and he can shoot at you and you can't do jack to him unless you feel like wasting arrows. And we get a little furnace to melt stuff down. <laughs> Buttons. I hate that door too. There we go. Okay. But uh, Arcadius and I spent a fair amount of time up here, both in terms of putting stuff together and, and farming for skulls. I did the not. hard way. <laughs> no, I think I have like all right, all right. eight beacons total. Yeah. Now, we're not going to take that old passage. Uh, we're going to take a look at two other spots, and then we're going to take the rail to the Guardian Farm, because that was that, that was a very nice project. That was a... Oh, that made life so much easier. So, as you heard Riest talking about, over here is the portal to Riest's place. You can tell by the expensive materials in the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and that it's fully encased in obsidian. It's also safe. <laughs> and that it's fully encased in obsidian. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, Reyes likes building with expensive materials. I didn't ever guessed. Yeah. Considering I'm the one that has to go collect them all. <laughs> and then this is my little hallway. Uh, it's gone through a few different designs, too. Uh, I built it in a hall because, well, the, the proper coordinates were in the middle of a mountain. That area over on that side was actually clear. This area on this side was clear. And uh, I just kind of built the portal in the cover. Uh, this was going to be a little gold farm, but the spawning platform mechanics are a little weird. And I didn't quite nail it this go around. So you get a pigman angry at you over here. And then when you get enough collecting down in that hole, you would head down this pit here. And then kill them all for their loot. I was going to put a furnace array over in here too, but I, I kind of forgot about that. Uh, when I didn't quite get the spawning mechanics set up correctly, it, uh, yeah. Oh, there are many in there. They're just all on the side. Weird. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, they spawned a little bit too far away. If I had this to do it again, I would push this observation area out 
and have the pit maybe over here or here. And that way you'd get a good 360 view of this area. Uh, because they're not going to spawn within 24 blocks of you. And if they spawn too far away, which some of this wall is, it's, oh, <laughs> this room represents a lot of the netherrack that you saw in the... Uh, <laughs> 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 in the, uh, the, the, the trading hall this where it came from? Yeah, that's oh. where it came from. Uh, Interesting. This path, actually, this path goes to the fortress to, uh, to get to the end. It is a very long, long path, and we didn't really do too much in the building in the end, so uh, we will not be showing it in the world tour. Let us get to this, the, the rail now. This was a fun labor of love. Uh, Zoom avoid put together this little cart design. You got to stand on no, the no no no. You what? stand on the pressure plate and then jump into the cart. Oh. Th this, this is like when you tried using my scale and you kept stepping on it and wondering why it wouldn't actually reset. I can't get over there. Oh, there it is. Oh no. Yes, you can. You Don't can reach it from them. here. See. I don't play this game well. <laughs> you go. Yeah, Arcadius did a lot of the digging, I did a lot of the design, and putting down rails. Well, we both put down a lot of rail. Uh, it used to be a, an ice boat that I put together, but... Yeah, and that's the lag weird stuff oh. happened with the way you get out of the boats. I don't miss the ice boat. <laughs> uh, it, this, it is kind of nice in that this was a good time to, like, hop on the rail and then, you know, go pour yourself a coffee. Uh... Because you got time. Ooh, speaking of. Oh yeah. Yeah, you, you might as well. I mean, this this takes a minute. <laughs> hmm. While you're up. Eight thousand blocks. Grazie. Yeah, the Guardian Farm is far away. Uh, <laughs> but we spent we spent a fair amount of time on that, both in terms of digging it out and in terms of uh, <laughs> using it as an XP farm and getting a uh, prismarine for the, the rail station. Because we... I'm, I'm fairly certain of my 140 some deaths, <laughs> almost 90% of them happened while I was clearing that darn... <laughs> yeah, yeah. because you, you cleared out the, the, uh, the initial temple itself. I cleared the temple, I cleared the water... Because I know I helped uh, with digging the a hole. little bit clearing the yeah. temple, but outside of that, um, most of the excess help I got after that was just digging, which I, I completely appreciate. Yeah, you, I was going to say, <laughs> but, <yeah>. excess help, <laughs> like, having, like, gee, having, that having enough help. Fight the, uh, fight the, uh, the mobs would have been a lot more useful. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wow. Okay, so that's what this side looks like with uh, shaders. That, that, that's a lot of brightness. Yeah, that's where I get most of my lava. Because <laughs> you just walk down to it. <laughs> it's like a giant ocean. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's right there. Ow. Oh. Of course it's nighttime. And this is like a new tour for me, too, because I don't ever go here. <laughs> Shall we start with the mobs, mob farm first? If you want to. That one or um, the... Wait. It's either way. What? This is new. What is this what? over here? This multicolored monstrosity. <laughs> what did you do? <laughs> oh, you should see it at night. It's kind of funny at night. It's a rainbow beacon. <laughs> I, I I see. I see it's a rainbow beacon. I'm sorry. I, I got distracted by the Why color. Why is it a rainbow beacon? <laughs> oh, wait, no. While we're over here, we need to do the spider farm. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, we, we can go by the spider farm. It has signs for me. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Arcadius like built it. a really nice spider farm over here when he was clearing out the area and found a uh, spider spawner. Uh Finest spider silk wool. Do -do. I 
the next one's over here. Yep, yeah, hey, that's right up here. No, no copyright takedowns for infringing music. You know that company is really rough on that. <laughs> Almost there. Rest. Turn back. <laughs> Warning. Warning. Cave spiders ahead. Warning. Stay back out of reach. Arcs string to wool emporium. Rest. You have been warned. <laughs> this really was a pretty good spider farm design, unless you decide to AFK while you go take a shower and then crash the server with all the resulting XP. That just means it worked, right? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we also spent a lot of time here to get wool. It, you can tell by the fine assortment of spider heads, and that's not counting the stacks and stacks of spider heads I've tossed into that lava pit. And the sting sword I left oh, here yeah. for everyone. <laughs> yep, yep. That's the sword that we were all using. Bane arthropods, looting, unbreaking, sweeping edge, mending. Name Sting. Please, literary folk, get the reference. <laughs> Our little enchanting station for uh, the use of the XP. But that that was a nice little farm. And over in this corner, Arcadius decided to start working on a mob farm. He built the platforms. I did the redstone. Oh, don't don't even medic. Don't even. What do you say? Wasn't he a musician? Sting. Oh. <laughs> nay, nay. So we get our little Etho hopper clock and our fun little Ooh, delay no, circuits. No, no. Is it too late to revote? <laughs> 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 yeah th this was a fun little bit of redstone i kind of had half an idea of how it was done and i was trying to figure it out myself so while this is probably not the best way to go about doing what i did eh, it, it, it works it works well you'll get a, you'll get a new chance at it as soon as i get an elytra next season. <laughs> <laughs> oh there's the nene fish farm how do you and, get into the bubble um, the, the trap doors that are all there are to make sure that creepers spawn more frequently than anything else. We also built a miniature sugarcane farm under there. It does not produce nearly enough sugarcane. So next go round, we'll probably build like four or five of those modules underneath. <laughs> and we got the massive, massive collection system. That, that <laughs> That's a lot of magma And cubes. then the server will die. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. The, we saved the server from dying because originally Arcadius was just going to make that a field of hoppers. And, and yeah, those things lag like a... Rum, rum, rum. <laughs> he came over here asking me why I needed it so much because I borrowed like three stacks of wood from him. <laughs> He's like, here, here's the... What are you doing? Because <laughs> he came to drop it off to me. And he saw that I already had like 60 some odd hoppers down. <laughs> like, no, that is not all right. <laughs> and we got our the only way I know how to do it. This, this was my first foray into automatic unloading stations, too. Uh, that was a that was an interesting adventure. Uh, I forget. I forget who did the, the design. I know we gave credits in the video where I built it. Uh, that is one thing that I want to be a little bit better at is making sure that I leave more signs on where I got the various builds and stuff. Ah, yes, Arcadius's angry fish farm. His guardian farm. I love this floor. Yeah, the mosaic is beautiful. <laughs> and again, it, so in case you haven't noticed, by looking at the different builds, you kind of get a sense for the different strengths and weaknesses uh, in building stuff. Um, ask me if you need something functional. Like, I want to turn all those dispensers on, but from down there, Anon, could you could you please build me something? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> that I can do. Building a floor like this, not so much. Ah, you could do it. It's easy. It's patterns. All I gotta do is patterns. I'm not in love with the bubble. It works. I'm not in love what, with the it. the glass bubble? Yeah. Well, and, and I should say that, that that roof, the capper on this has gone through at least a half dozen different designs. Uh, maybe even uh, a little yeah. bit more. 
Yeah, several. Yeah. <laughs> Because at, at one the point, it was an angry spawning dumb. platform of, oh, seriously. And the portal was not on the island we originally came in. The portal was right over here. Um, then we got our nice little fish pond. This looks amazing with shaders. And the little panda on the wall. And the fish. You wish for fish. That's the evil fish side. Yeah, because that's know, the side honestly, of the fish farm zone. You could use the same lighting design for um, your bottle. Yeah. yeah. I thought about that. And if you put it oh, in one, inset one, it'll hide it a little bit better. Oh, and in one of the earlier designs, this was just a regular spawnable floor, and that's how we found out where all the spawn chunks were, as illustrated by those banners, the hard way. <laughs> We, we eventually ended up building, like, what, a dozen iron golems and just kind of let them patrol the, uh... Oh, they're still here. Come here. I'll show That's you. That's right. There's a couple of them down under the floor. They're right down here. Yeah, there's still two right there. I'm sure yeah. there's more down here. Because this goes to bedrock, so... Oh, yeah, no, I see three of them. There's a few survivors. They're survivors. They remember the slime wars. <laughs> Oh man, good times, good times. Oh, whoa, whoa, reverse, reverse, there, dude. Yeah, there's no way to prevent that. Oh yeah, Arch because they can spawn on uh, soul, soul sand. sand, no matter what my light level is. And uh, this is why you didn't need a bigger uh, <laughs> <laughs> nether wart farm. Oh no, I would have put a roof on top of it, so that way it would have been harder for them to spawn. Where'd your people go? Didn't you have people in here? I do. That's down there. That's the die farm. Yeah, that, that's yeah, the die farm um, that I gave Arcadius a hard time about because I kept trying to look for the uh, the refill station on the bone meal. There is no refill station. You got to kind of poke a hole in the wall until you find the dispensers. It's not that hard. You break open the glass, you pick up the no, plant. No, no, no. It's not that hard to do it right. You plant down the glass. It's not down that hard to do it right. <laughs> do it right. In a building. Here's your right. and pretty floor. Oh, there, there, yeah. there are more people in here than last time. Mm -hmm. Where did they come from? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ar Arcadius asked for villagers, so I brought him Bill and Ted. Hi, Bill. Hi, Ted. They um, had an excellent adventure. They had you know an excellent adventure through the Nether. Um, they they also had a third companion who who got lost in the nether. We we don't talk about him. <laughs> and they populated a nice little trading hall. Mm -hmm. I brought the two in here, and then I used all the beds I gave Rast for the uh, village build to uh, get them to make babies for me. There you go. And I think I, I like might that floor, steal though. the. Yeah, I. I I was just thinking I might, instead of trying to slab up my place um, in the next one, try a glass floor and just do it that way. So pretty. And actually, this was the first uh, first time I did filtered <laughs> filtered storage to get the uh, the crystals in one side and the shards in another and um, the fish in another. I built it with the raw cut of initially but uh, I forgot that because I use a sword with uh, flame I end up with cook cod so that column was kind of unnecessary and then for a while Arcadius had uh, a little lava blade up top there and so it produced a ton of cooked cod this room went through a couple of designs too so I wired up that button to turn the the water dispensers on to get the guardians flowing and then uh, we got this door here for the backstage stuff. So we get into the redstone and troubleshoot and all that kind of fun. And I kept the lava pit there for the mass I need to destroy stuff. <laughs> so I could throw it in a chunk at a time. I mean, we do have our little trash dispenser, but uh, it, it only goes but so, so fast. Which one's your favorite, I asked? Which one what? Which wall is your favorite? Was that a cat? I did not build a cat. No, 
Oh, I heard a cat. Oh, there is a cat. What in the world? Oh, the villager. Uh, because you got enough villagers, they make a village that, pr and villages randomly produce cats. Go get some raw cod, and you can Weird. tame them. Weird. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, the panda's my favorite. Okay. You're kitty, kitty, kitty. I know that's lame, but I just think he's so cute. And we can't talk about the yellow one on the wall. I'm actually kind of surprised that the cat's out here and not in the village. Unless he walked through the door on us and we didn't notice. Hey. That's a possibility. Hey, you're trying to tame cats in my base? Yeah. <laughs> and Reyes just walking around with a sword. What are you doing? <laughs> I don't like cats. Come here. <laughs> Come here. Yeah, but they bring you stuff. I'll try and chase him back towards you. No, no, no. The other way. No, no, no. no. <laughs> don't, don't chase him. Don't chase him. All right, we're, we're getting distracted. Raw cod or cook cod? Raw. Raw, I think. Yeah, but you're supposed coming. to... Coming. He's coming to you. Grab him. We're not bagging the cat. What kind Dang, of... he's fast. <laughs> well, it, it doesn't help that it gets a little laggy with all the water updates here. Ah, uh, Rias got him. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we ended up getting so much cod out of this farm that we started tossing it in the trash. And just keeping a little bit here and there. Hey, kitty, kitty. Okay. I like dogs better. And, uh, I believe... I believe that's uh, that's the end of the world tour, right? Is that everything? Yep. I think that's everything. That's... Outside of, the, I mean, we missed the ink farm, but. Oh yeah. Uh, nope. I would chalk the ink farm up to the <laughs> the same thing with the mapping farm. It's a uh, <laughs> kind of a dead project. It didn't work. <laughs> oh, it worked. Oh my. That that is uh that is colorful. <laughs> wow. Yep, I ran out of uh, panes. Of, uh, what were you gonna going. do? Do glass panes up to build height? Yeah, I ran out though. <laughs> <laughs> and that was three stacks or uh, two full stacks of each. <laughs> yeah. Well, let that me, is certainly uh, colorful. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is something very special. All right, so let me uh, move this over to the uh, end screen theater with the credits. And this is where I say thank you for joining along with this extra long stream. This is the end of season zero. So that was the world tour, everything that happened. And tomorrow at 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern, we will be joined by Medic, our fourth member and newest addition to the Coffee Craft server, and we will be starting Season 1. So 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern, we're going to start Season 1, and uh, and then we get to go from there. And it's a new world, new seed. I'll have all that stuff posted up on the website, coffeecraft.us. That's where uh, we just did the redesign. You'll get information on the members, where to find our YouTube channels, you know, so you can subscribe and like and all that other stuff. Right now, all I've been doing is uploading the uh, live stream archive, so you'll be able to watch this again later if you missed it or you weren't here for all of it. And uh, there will be some more produced episodes, a little bit shorter and that kind of thing, coming up in the very near future. That is my goal for 2020. So uh, with all that said and done, if you're watching this on Twitch or Mixer, follow along if you haven't already to get notified when I go live. And if you're watching this later on YouTube, subscribe to get notified when new stuff gets added. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. And uh, if you have any quips, quotes, queries, complaints, quandaries, or other whatnot, don't forget to leave those down in the comments. And uh, with all that said and done, have fun, enjoy, and I will see you tomorrow for the start of Season 1.